In today's video, we are going to code a proximal policy optimization agent in TensorFlow 2. We're not gonna need any long-winded explanations. In fact, we're going to use my PyTorch code as a basis for this agent. So the first thing we wanna do is a git clone of my YouTube repo, and that will give us access to the PyTorch code. So let's CD into the YouTube code repository do a list, go into reinforcement learning. We want to go to policy gradient and PPO. And then you can see, see here we have a torch directory. So let's make dir tf2 and then cd. And we, you know what we can actually do is uh, copy torch forward slash star dot pi into tf2 and then cd tf2 and do a list. So you can see we have a main PPO torch and utils. Now, if we take a look at the PPO torch file, you can see we have the memory class, we have the networks, so an actor network and a critic network. And we also have our agent class. Now, I want to uh, kind of rearrange the structure here because I no longer like doing it this way. I, mean, I didn't really like it at the time. I just did it because it's YouTube. But what we want to do is we want to copy PPO torch into, I believe I called it memory.py. We want to copy PPO torch into um, networks.py. And then we want to just move it into agent.py. Then if you do another list, we can see we have agent main memory networks and utils, much more clear and self-explanatory. So we will start with the memory file because that is quite easy. So the only thing we're gonna need here is NumPy. We can get rid of all the other dependencies. Uh, and then we will deal with these uh, on over indentations in a moment. The first thing I wanna do, however, is delete all of the superfluous code. So we're gonna get rid of all the networks and the agent. So get rid of that. And then all we're left with is the code for the PPO memory. So then this is over indented. So my version of my installation of Vim um, follows most of the pep8 style guide i silence the warnings for quite a few things because they're simply too annoying so let's do one indentation and see what it says it likes that so then let's just do that okay and so there are no other warnings so we can write quit out of that then we can take a look at the networks now here we won't need os or numpy in fact, we won't need any of the torch stuff, obviously, because we're using uh, TensorFlow 2. And we can def we can delete, not defeat, we can delete our PPO memory. And then we are left with the actor network, critic network, and the agent. So let's get rid of the agent. And then we will focus on rewriting our networks using TensorFlow 2 instead of PyTorch. So let's scroll up. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is delete these save checkpoint functions because I've moved all of that into the agent class. Uh, and the reason why will be apparent once we get there, it's just a little bit cleaner to do it that way. Delete that. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of imports we have to take care of. Let's say TensorFlow as TF. Uh, import tensorflow.keras as keras and from tensorflow keras layers import dense. So we're not going to be doing, uh, I should specify that we're going to be doing the uh, discrete action case um, and we're not going to be doing any stuff with like say the Atari library. We're just going to do the cart pull environment because it executes very, very quickly and we can demonstrate that the agent works very, very quickly. So in um, in TensorFlow 2, your class is derived from keras.model. Uh, we don't need input dims. We won't need an alpha, which is a learning rate, because we're going to compile our uh, model in the agent class. And we also won't need that checkpoint directory because we'll be doing the model checkpointing within the agent class. So then we can 
just keep all of those defaults, get rid of this checkpoint file. Uh, we will rewrite the network before we delete the code there. So we will say self.fc1 equals dense. And we don't have to specify any input dimensions because TensorFlow 2 infers them. But we do want to specify an activation function. That's very handy. Uh, you don't have to call a separate function to handle that. Then we can do a second fully connected layer. FC2 dims activation equals ReLU once again. And then we have our final layer, which we will call, I don't know, I guess pi equals dense. That takes n actions outputs and our activation function is a ReLU, or excuse me, sorry, softmax. It's staring me right in the face. So then delete this. We also don't need our optimizer. We also do not need our optimizer device or the self.2 command. Other thing I wanna do is uh, rename this function as call. That will allow us to use the name of our object to perform the forward propagation. So then for our feed forward, let's delete this and say x equals self.fc1 state dot fc2 x self.fc3 x and then just return that x. That isn't the best form. Wow, there's a whole lot of white space here. Good grief. Let's do that. Okay. So um, we're just going to leave it as the name x because it's just basically a dummy variable. You know it's the, um, actually this is an issue. We have to call that pi, right? Actually in my cheat sheet, I did call it fc3. So let's just be consistent with that. So next up we do something similar for the critic network. So we'll derive from keras.model. We once again do not need input dims or a learning rate alpha or a checkpoint directory. We will keep the default uh, parameters. And we don't need the file joining operation. So we'll define our layers. Very uh, similar to what we have in the actor network. And our output is a single value with no activation function because we want the actual value of the state according to the deep neural network. Then we can get rid of all of this stuff because we won't need it. Rename this call and say x. Sorry, that should be state and then return x. So let's see if I have any other, uh, apparently I do not use TensorFlow. Okay, so we'll get rid of that import and then that is good to go. So we have our memory, we have our networks, now we have to deal with our agent. Okay, so I didn't delete the other stuff in the agent file. Let's start with that. So we'll get rid of the PPO memory, the actor network, critic network, and then we're left with our agent class. So we don't need any of the torch stuff. We don't need the OS stuff. We will need NumPy. We'll need TensorFlow as TF, Keras, We'll need our Atom Optimizer. Uh, one other note, you will need the TensorFlow probability package for this. I'll do a pip list so you can see what it looks like, uh, but that is necessary for this agent. We also need our memory, PPO memory, and our networks. our actor and critic network. Um, so then for our agent, 
we have a bunch of uh, default parameters. We have our policy clip, batch size, number of epochs. We will need a checkpoint directory. I think this line is too long, isn't it? So let's fix that. And then come down to a new line uh, and say checkpoint directory. equals models. So then we have our gamma policy clip number of epochs. Why is it unhappy? Oh, it's under indented, of course. Okay, save our gamma policy clip number of epochs GAE lambda that is for our generalized advantage estimation. Checkpoint dir equals checkpoint dir. We have our actor network. We don't need to pass in our input dims or our alpha. Uh, likewise for our critic network, we only need to call the constructor. And then we can handle uh, compiling them. So we'll say self.actor.compile optimizer optimizer equals atom learning rate equals alpha. And then we're gonna compile our critic And obviously it's a hyperparameter, uh, the learning rate of both neural networks to play with. I've used a single value for both networks and it works just fine in the cart poll. It stands to reason for more complex environments you're gonna need, you know, different learning rates perhaps. So our memory stays the same. And then uh, I'm gonna change the name of this function. I don't like the name remember anymore. Uh, I'm going to call it store transition. Uh, it does the same thing. So then we have our functions to save and load models. So these are going to be slightly different. What we want to do is say self.actor.save checkpoint directory plus actor. And plus critic. And then for loading our models, it's unhappy. Oh, I have an equal sign. I didn't press the shift key, of course. So then we say self.actor equals keras models load model checkpoint directory plus actor. Okay, so then there are no mistakes there. Um, so now we come down to our choose action function and this will be a little bit different. So obviously it is not a PyTorch tensor, it is a TensorFlow convert to tensor. We do want to add the batch dimension to our observation. We don't have to specify a D type and we certainly don't have to send it to a device because this is TensorFlow 2. Then actually let's delete all of this so I don't get confused. I will say our probabilities equals self.actor state. Our distribution is TFP distributions dot categorical based on the probability supplied by our network. The action is going to be a sampling of that distribution. And we will need the log prob as in the log of the probability of taking that action. And we want the value of that action according to our critic network. And then we want to convert all those, we want to get the values out of those more specifically, so we're going to dereference them with dot numpy. So we say action equals action dot numpy. This is like saying dot item in PyTorch. and log prob equals log prob dot numpy. And we have to take the zeroth element because it returns an array. So then we return our action log prob and value. And then we come down to our learn function. Let me press escape first to make sure I didn't make any obvious mistakes there. Okay, it looks good. So our learn function is going to be a little bit different. So 
Um, the iteration over the number of epochs, sampling the memory, converting um, all of this stuff here is going to stay the same. A couple things we don't want to do is we don't want to convert the advantage and values to tensors. Reason being is that TensorFlow 2 can deal quite happily with NumPy arrays in the loss function and also the uh, TensorFlow 2 tensors don't support indexing in the same way that NumPy arrays do. So rather than rewrite this code to accommodate that fact, I'm going to leave the advantage and values arrays as NumPy arrays because they work just fine in TensorFlow 2. So delete that. And then we come down here for batch and batches. So this is where our actual learning comes in. So the first thing I want to do is account for the fact that we are in fact using TensorFlow 2. And I will do so by using the gradient tape context manager. So we say with TF gradient tape Persistent equals true as tape. Now, what that persistent equals true does is, let me just indent all of that, is allows us to uh, back propagate twice. And we want to do that because we're going to stick all of our calculations for the gradients and the loss, excuse me, all of our calculations for the loss function within this context manager because in TensorFlow 2, only things in this context manager get counted towards the loss function. So the first thing I'll do is handle the conversion to tensors. So convert to tensor, state array, batch, and we don't need the data type or the dot two method. Similarly for the other parameters here, convert to tensor. We don't need any of that. We don't need any of this. And here we have that TF convert to tensor. So then uh, I'm going to come down and actually get rid of the total loss, uh, the back propagation, and the stepping of the optimizers because we don't do any of that stuff in PyTorch, excuse me, TensorFlow 2. And I'm going to delete those useless. Uh, lines at the end of the file and then get rid of my white space just to get rid of some warnings okay so now we come back up we have our states old probs and actions so I'm going to rename this call it probs because we're not returning a distribution we're returning probabilities equals self dot actor states then we're going to call our distribution t.distributions categorical probs and get our new probabilities. So down here it has new probs equals dist.logprob actions, where if you recall, we um, said dist equals self.actor self .actor of states. So in the PyTorch implementation, the forward propagation returned an actual distribution that we could use to take the log of the probability of the actions that were actually taken during this batch. We don't have that luxury here, so what we're doing is uh, getting the um, probabilities defined by our softmax and then creating a new distribution. This is just kind of the easiest way to do it. You don't want to stick the distribution inside of the call function for the actor network because then when you go to save the model, it barks at you that it can't save a distribution or a TensorFlow object other than a tensor. I don't remember the exact details of the message, but the bottom line was it had to be a tensor to save. And so you have to call the distribution here instead of in the call function. It's a long-winded way of saying that's why you got to do that. So we have dist, and then we have new probs equals dist.logprob actions. So I'll put it there and delete the line there. We don't want to do it twice. There's no point in that. Then we have critic value equals self.critic states. And we're going to need to squeeze that because we have a batch dimension. So we'll say tf.squeeze and we want to specify the first dimension. So then our prob ratio is, I'm going to delete this line and use this. We're going to say tf.math.exponential of the difference between new probs and old. So then we have 
I'm, I'm tired. I'm probably misspeaking. Sorry. So then we have weighted probs equals advantage sub batch minus, or excuse me, times prob ratio. We'll keep that the same. Then I'm going to call this weighted probabilities. Um, do I want to? How do I want to do that? It's unhappy undefined name T because we have to call this TF dot clip by value instead of clamp. And then it's prob ratio one minus that one minus our policy clip and then one plus policy clip. So to clip it between the range 0 0.8 and 1.2 because our policy clip defaults to 0 0.2. And then I'm going to move this line down and say weighted probs equals clipped probs times the advantage of the batch. And then I'm going to change this to clipped probs. Reason being is the PEP8 style guidelines will get very upset at me uh, for various reasons having the multiplication multiplication operator on one line and then stuff on the other it's first world problems to be sure so then uh, now we have the actor loss and so that will be negative tf math dot min and mum I made that mistake earlier weighted probs weighted clipped probs we don't have a dot mean method in TensorFlow 2, so I will say actor loss equals TF math reduce mean actor loss. And then our returns will be advantage plus values for that batch. And our critic loss will be, um, why is this? Oh, because I called it weighted probs. Let's call it weighted clipped probs because that's more accurate. There we go. Okay, and then our uh, critic loss will be mean squared error between our critic value and those returns. Okay, so then... It's unhappy because we haven't used critic loss yet. I can understand that. Let's delete that line to get rid of that error. Then outside of the gradient tape, we want to say actor params equals self dot actor dot trainable variables, and likewise for critic, uh, critic params equals self dot critic trainable variables. The actor grads equals um, tape dot gradient actor loss, actor params, critic grads equals tape dot gradient, critic loss, critic params. So we're getting the gradients with respect to our relevant parameters. And then we say self dot actor dot optimizer dot apply gradients, zip actor grads, actor params. And likewise for the critic, And we do still want to clear our memory. And so there are no obvious errors here. So let us scroll up and see it's unhappy about missing white space. Okay, did I reformat that in my cheat sheet? I did. So what I did was I, yeah, so this is something I don't like about the PEP8 style guidelines is it has to look like that so that it doesn't complain. That's a little obnoxious to me. And then this has to be indented and that goes there. Okay, so that's happy. And then it's unhappy about white space. Okay, all right, now it is no longer unhappy. Okay, so now we can right quit out of that and check out our main file. So we have to change this. It's from agent import agent. 
then of course I have to fix my um, formatting there. Sorry, I'm just checking the main file over here to make sure I didn't change anything else. So there is missing, there's an extra white space there. And this has a white space there, okay. Uh, I kept the number of games the same. I did change the name of this function, so let's change that. Store transition. And that's unhappy about the lines. What did I do here? Okay. Whoops. Okay. So then we can scroll down. It's unhappy about formatting here. Okay. I have a blank line and an extra line. Okay. Now it is happy. Okay, so let's exit out of here and cross our fingers and run it to see how it does. Okay, so it's unhappy about something. It says prob ratio. So the error is invalid argument area require, requires broadcastable shapes at location unknown for operation subtract. And that's in this line on 87 and learn that's new probs minus old probs. So I'm going to take a look at my cheat sheet because I'm fairly certain I didn't boink that up. And then I will take a look. So then we go back to agent. That was line what 87. Okay, so new probs is dist of log probs of actions. Okay, we have that. And then old probs is from our um, memory. So then if the issue is with the dimensionality, it would stand to reason that the old probs is probably messed up. So if we scroll back up here, old probs comes from here where I calculate the log prob. And that's log prob that numpy sub zero, okay. Oh, I know what I did. Of course, I don't want to return probs. I want to return log prob. Okay. Let's try it again. That's some real time debugging for you. Okay, and it starts off right off the bat playing. Uh, that was my only mistake. It's a new moon record. Okay, so I'm going to let that run for a little while. And once it becomes obvious it's learning, I will return to show you the results. Okay, so of course it finished and I realized I didn't do a make dir plots. However, you can see just by looking at the overall trend in the scores uh, that the agent was indeed learning. Really is a question asked, is our children learning? Am I right? But uh, we see scores of 200, 116, 138, 173. So certainly better than you would get by chance. And it does trend up over time. So you can see there were in the beginning there were long stretches when it was getting relatively low scores, although it did seem to figure it out at least a little bit pretty quickly. So you can see in the very beginning scores of around 50 or less and then progressing into scores in the mid hundred all the way up to 200. So, okay, that seems to me like pretty solid evidence that our TensorFlow 2 agent and PPO works. Uh, if you like full details on how this stuff works, check out the PyTorch tutorial. I didn't really wanna go too verbose with this and repeat myself. Um, so uh, check that video out if you need a deeper tutorial. Otherwise, this was the TensorFlow 2 implementation of PPO. Questions, comments, leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next video.